Do you or a loved one suffer from paddle handsitis or can't catch for shit syndrome? Well, you're not entitled to any financial compensation, but after watching this video, you'll hopefully find yourself acting more like Odell Beckham Jr. instead of Jared Cook around the house. Plus, the following physics will help you perform one-handed grabs with slippery substances like these viral content creators. What more could you ask for? Imagine this space station is traveling at 10,000 kilometers per hour in space and you want to dock onto it. Should you sit directly in its path and hope for the best? No, of course not. Instead, you'd pull a Matthew McConaughey and try to approach the velocity of the ship so you can slowly come together and gently lock in. Here's real footage of docking to the International Space Station, but even this is sped up at 10 times speed. Anyway, the same physics logic should be used when trying to catch balls or everyday things like androids and apples. There's four reasons for this, hence the acronym. The first is impact. Here's me taking a water balloon to the chest to simulate how second grade kickball outfielders try to catch. My chest is pretty rigid and bony thanks to a lack of gains, meaning the balloon abruptly stops and the force is high enough that the structural integrity of the balloon is broken. Just like a soccer player performing a chest trap, you want to move with the object. Here's some imaginary force versus time graphs that I made to help visualize the difference. I made each function just be a bunch of steps for simplicity, which you'll hopefully see in a minute. Since force times time is actually the same units as momentum, you can view the areas of these two graphs as the total momentum change needed to bring the water balloon to rest. The area is the same for both graphs, but the maximum force in one of the graphs is much higher. That's why you'll never see a state water balloon toss champion who doesn't cradle the fall. And moving on to the second reason why you should cradle the object, which is accuracy. All of the other reasons are completely irrelevant if you're unable to make contact with the ball to begin with. While this is quite possibly an incurable genetic predisposition, cradling the object gives those who are hard of coordination more time to track the object and get their hands somewhere in position. Anyway, even if the object won't shatter and you are spot on with your hand placement, distributing the force is still important because it helps prevent the object from bouncing out of your hand. Which leads me to the third reason why cradling the ball is important, which is timing. For any given object, there's only so much time that you can close your fist and successfully lock on. Moving with the object increases this period of time. In this example, the die was in the successful catch zone shown in green for 10 frames while moving with the die as opposed to 6 frames without. Now at this point some of you might be saying it's sometimes easier to swing your hand toward the die and scoop it, which seems like the opposite of everything said in this video. And although it seems like the opposite of cradling, it's also useful for the same reason of timing. Swiping through the die quickly accelerates the die to near the same speed as your hand, which again gives you a larger range of time to successfully close your fist. However, it only works for objects that have relatively little momentum and are therefore easy to change the direction of. In other words, don't try this with a 100 mile per hour bowling ball or you'll run into the same issue brought out in point one. Which leads me to the final reason why cradling is important, which really isn't a reason, but rather something worth noting. Elasticity. Cratling the object isn't as important when the object is squishy, like this burrito, because it will deform around your hand or can be grabbed by squeezing. Now let's apply the cradle principles to making one-handed grabs, which seems to rely more on friction. Ever since hot hands from Little Giants used that sticky stuff on his hands, the whole world knew that sticky stuff helps you catch. And conversely, a slick substance makes it hard to catch a ball one-handed. But to quote 5'2 Joe Bartolozzi, just because your hand's slippery doesn't mean you're not going to catch it. And he's exactly right. You technically don't need friction or grip to catch anything, although that's not to say this is easy by any means. Rather than using the friction of your fingers to slow down the ball, try to absorb all the kinetic energy by getting in front of the ball and approaching its velocity upon impact, sort of like trying to mimic an elastic collision. Then you can let gravity do the rest. None of this is to say that you can't catch anything if you disobey the tips of this method. If you have kawaii hands and impeccable grip strength, you might be able to snatch things like magic, but for the rest of us, just use the easier physics.